Christ the King Lutheran Church. We especially uh, welcome the guests and visitors that are here with us today. Uh, someone recently called for a dress-up day, <laughs> for a team spirit day, uh, because the football season starts. And so if you see a bunch of uh, uh, sports paraphernalia around, that's just uh, trying to have a little fun here. So uh, <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Uh, all right, but on to more important things. We are here to uh, receive the word of God, to receive the sacraments, to be in his presence and respond to him with our, our prayer and our praise. Uh, and so uh, we begin with our first hymn, hymn number 545. Please rise. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as I called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. We read together the intro of the day. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call my God. Do not death to me, lest if you sign unto me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Isaiah chapter 35. 
Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and with the re recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from James chapter 2. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored, dishonored the poor man. You are the are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the needs of the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> the seventh chapter. Mark writes, Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus 
Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 797. <laughs>
learned from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for today is the, the lesson from James we read earlier. It's a little, little tough, a little troubling, and we're going to try to work through it. The lesson from James we read earlier, we're close to the end, he says, verse 17. So, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. This is a, a very troubling passage for many reasons, for many Christians, trying to understand, is it grace alone, faith alone, scripture alone? Or is this saying that now we have faith and works? Some people are wanting to say, James and Paul don't agree. And, and now there's a fight between the author James, who wrote the epistle James, and the author Paul, who wrote uh, 13 epistles. <laughs> and, and so, you know, is there a balance of, is there a challenge here, or how are we to understand it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe we need to look at Mark 7 just real quick. Jesus walks to the one who is having trouble hearing and having trouble hear, uh, speaking. Actually, who cannot hear and cannot speak and says to him, Ephatha, be opened. You know, uh, like pulling the headphones off, pulling the earplugs out, pulling the, the deafness out of the man and saying, you are going to hear now. Pulling the muteness out of the man, right? spitting on his hand, touching his tongues, you know, uh, hygiene. <laughs> uh, but bringing hearing and speech and healing into this man's life. Maybe we need to look at James and, and other passages and hear God say to you, Ephatha, you are going to hear this. Open up your ears and hear this now. Take a look at this, right? Jesus brings hearing to the person because he really wants to heal this man. He wants this man to hear and speak and have life and hear the word of God and hear the voice of his neighbors and of his family and be able to speak to them and have his life restored. Be opened. So maybe we get to wrestle with the epistle of James a little bit here and, and have Jesus say, do you hear this? Ephatha, open your ears and hear what this is saying and try to understand this. So in James chapter 2, Jesus is really speaking to those who need to hear. Have you been doing anything? He kind of tells them. Don't show partiality. Do not show favoritism. Make sure that you don't neglect those who are without, who are weak, or who are poor. Make sure that you actually have works that are in keeping with the faith that you profess. Now, as sinners, we may want to ask God the same line uh, from that old 80s song, what have you done for me lately? Right? Uh, you lived in the 80s, you may even know that song. Ooh, 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 yeah. Right? <laughs> That's how these songs go, right? Uh, we may, as sinners, want to ask God, God, of what, what have you done for me lately? In James 2, God is now going to speak to us. <clears throat> what have you been doing? And he doesn't even say, what have you been doing for me, God, lately? He's saying, what have you been doing for anyone else lately? Don't show partiality. Don't neglect the weak or the poor or the sick or the lonely or the widowed or the orphan. It's all there in James. Don't neglect them. Don't just find those who are uh, in your circle or you want to be in their rich circle or in their circle of position or prestige or you have the same likes uh, or anything like that. Don't just try to uh, uh, butter up those that you, you want to be closer to. Remember the poor. Remember the sick. Remember the lame. Remember those who are in need. Remember those who need the same works of God active in their life. So the book of James, especially here in chapter 2, is speaking to those who need to be convicted. 
Jesus, or God speaking through James, is seeking to convict those who may have a, a lazy, a lax faith. That is just leaning back and going, well, I'm saved. I don't have to think of anyone else. I'll do what's good for me. I'll serve those people because there may be good consequences for me. I'm, it might be good for me to get to know them, to get into their circle, rub elbows a little bit, right? And finally, he ends by saying, you have to walk the talk. In James, he's saying, dear Christians, your faith shows in what you do. And if you do nothing, it might show that you have a faith that might believe nothing. That might believe that Jesus and you got it all worked out. And it doesn't matter if you have a care in the world for anyone else. And so he would say, show me your faith by what you don't do. I'll show you my faith by how I show my works. That's not a matter of showing off. He's trying to say, we actually, our faith should move us into action. It, we don't have a lazy faith. We don't have a faith that rides on the coattails of one another. Uh, this cartoon was given me this week from the newspaper and shows someone at the, the gates of heaven, of course, it must be St. Peter's here at the admission <laughs> desk. We need to see more actual good deeds rather than simply retweeting the good deeds of others. <laughs> well, they did good deeds, and I liked them. I, I shared the good news. Uh, I shared what they did. Uh, have you do something is the encouragement here. Speaking to those of us who may be become lazy in our faith. Speaking to us in those times where we go, ah, doesn't matter. Jesus saved me. All is forgiven. I don't have to think about it anymore. Right? I'm forgiven. I don't have to repent. I'm forgiven. I don't have to do anything else. I'm forgiven. Let me just go back to my life of cushy laziness. Right? And it speaks to all of us. Really. It speaks to us saying our faith moves us into action. Christ himself has come and not only opened the ears and opened the mouth of, the, of the, the ones who need to speak, but Isaiah 35 says he gives sight to the blind, he gives speech to the mute, he gives hearing to the deaf, he helps the lame to leap. And by the way, Jesus is the one who not only gives us physical healing, but by his life and death on the cross gives us spiritual healing, takes our sins unto himself, bears the punishment for them, so that the, the accusation of condemned and damned to hell would not be on us. And we would have a verdict forgiven and free be upon us. No longer locked up, but opened. Ephetha, free because of Christ's death and resurrection. The guilt he takes, the freedom and the salvation we take. So James chapter 2 is written to those who need to be convicted of their sins, need to hear that you can't fall into laziness. James chapter 2 is written as a conviction or a warning to us to say don't fall into false works, don't fall into fake faith, don't fall into showing favoritism and ignoring others and, and or, or just gliding scot-free with our faith. Let your faith be active. Now there's another chapter too that we don't want to forget. And these are both great. They're not contra contradictory. This is from Paul. This is from Ephesians chapter 2. Some great verses. Now James chapter 2 is spoken to those who need to be convicted of their sins. But Ephesians chapter 2 is spoken to us who need to hear that there's life even though we have been sinners. In James chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it will say, It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this, not your own doing, it's a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. James 2 tells us to get busy. Ephesians 2 tells you that your works will not save you. 
That's very good to keep in, in to remember. You are saved by grace, by God's grace, through faith. Scripture alone will tell us that. This little banner over here is what I'm pointing at. Saying that God's grace alone comes to us through Jesus Christ's work alone. That he alone went to the cross to, to bear the punishment for our sins. And that our salvation comes through Christ alone. And so we simply don't do any works. We just believe alone what the work that Christ has done. James 2 will tell us to get busy. Ephesians 2 will tell us you are saved by Christ. So you are saved by Christ. And he has taken care of your salvation. So now in faith in Christ we say I have something I can do for others. Christ has saved me. I can serve others. I don't need to look after my salvation. Christ has taken care of me. I can take care of others with my works. My faith is in Christ. My works are for those around me. My works are not for me to say I get more brownie points with God. <laughs> My works are because someone needs some help in their life. Someone needs joy in their life, and we can bring it. Someone needs mercy in their life, and we can bring it. Someone needs to hear of Jesus, and you can bring it. Someone needs care. And maybe it's for us to do it. I got to see yesterday at uh, the movie theater, actually, uh, there was a, a gentleman who was clearly uh, blind, uh, standing kind of off to the side and not looking like he knew exactly what to do. And, and one of the workers very kindly came over to him and offered him uh, some help and care and kind of took him by the hand and the elbow and guided him along. I only had a minute to see this, but I was very impressed to see that this worker came to someone who was very clearly not able to navigate the area and offered them some assistance, some help, some care, some, some love. Maybe no one else noticed. You could say it was just the job of the worker, but she offered it with such care and such help for someone in need. We get to see that our works matter. Not for God. Not so that we can impress him. But our works matter to the world. So Ephesians 2 will tell us, it is by Christ you have been saved. And James 2 will tell us, so get busy. And, and tell us that our faith will produce those works. And then let's go back to Ephesians 2. And we heard that we are saved through Christ. And so verse 10, the next verse, it says, So you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do these good works. Well, what if we hear how oh, I've been created to do these good works by God. I've been saved by him so that I can be free to do good works. I haven't been doing it. I feel terrible. I haven't been enough. It's a very tricky word. In our faith. Have I done enough? Have I been good enough? Have I prayed enough? Have I read the Bible enough? Have I served enough? Are my works enough? And, and the answer will always be no. Because you think you can always do more. What if I haven't been enough? Look again to Ephesians 2. It's not saved by your enough. You are saved by Christ. And he is enough. Christ is worthy. Worthy is him the lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be the people of God. Am I enough? It's been told to me before, I don't think I can come to the communion, Lord. Or, uh, Lord. I, I don't think I can come to communion, Pastor. I haven't been good enough. Guess what? Forgiveness of sins. This is where we go because we have not been enough. I, I haven't been faithful enough. Christ is enough. I haven't served. I haven't done my good works enough. Maybe God says that's right. But Christ has done all the work for you. Now you can go do more now. Because Christ has done all the work for you. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue on page 9 with the offertory. Please rise.
Our prayers are found at the bottom of page 9. In addition to the prayers at the bottom of page 9, uh, or the prayers listed on page 19, we'll also be praying for the family and friends of two people uh, who have died this week from COVID. For prayers have been requested for the family and friends of Charles and the family and friends of Mark. Uh, please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in holy baptism, you have caused waters to break forth in the wilderness and made streams in the desert of this world. Open our eyes to this new life in Christ and our ears to hear your word. Free us to walk uprightly and loose our tongues to praise you for this treasure. Keep us from showing partiality and making distinctions among ourselves, and making us rich in good works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, create and sustain in us a lively faith in Christ Jesus, and lead us by your Spirit to be active in all good works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help parents to raise their children to know you as their help and hope that they may not put their trust in princes in whom there is no salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our hope in you and ask your blessings on all rulers, that their plans would be ordered for the welfare of those they govern, and that you would execute your justice for the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would behold graciously the sick and those in any need, 
especially we pray today for the family and friends of Charles and of Mark, for Dave, Jim, Barbara, Isabel, and Roma, for Buck, Buck, Matt, Ruth, Charlie, and Matt, for Chris, Maria, Scott, and Kathy, for Kathy and Angela, for Susan, Blaine, Marjorie, and Darlene, for the wife of Jonathan, and for Barbara. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
We continue on page 15 with the Nunc Dimittis. Please rise. God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 643. Amen.
Again, good morning and welcome to Christ the King Lutheran Church. Uh, we do welcome the guests and visitors that are here with us today. I'd like to direct your attention to a few things in the announcement pages. I'll just try to be uh, brief with each of them, just to highlight them. Uh, the parish cleaning crew, we are wanting to kind of get some sign-ups. We've had uh, one person uh, managing it for a time, but it's time to recruit some help. And so there's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you think you can, they're by date, right? If you think you can grab a particular date to help uh, that week to clean up, uh, please take a look at that. Uh, it really helps just to take care of God's church. And that's all we're trying to do. And have this place in good order for God's people. And so uh, if you have any questions, I guess talk to Beth Bruce about that uh, as well. Uh, to take a look at a few other things, next week we have a luncheon after church, a barbecue luncheon. Uh, if you want to help bring some of those fixins, uh, what are the fixins? Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. You can tell us what fixins there are, right? Uh, what's a wonderful uh, luncheon after church next week. Also, a, a uh, youth confirmation planning meeting to get that started for this year as well. Uh, everything else there, it, please take it home and, and uh, consider it. A uh, few other things. Uh, Steve, did you want to say anything about... No. Okay. Yeah. All right. He, he wanted you to wear all of your sports gear. I did not wear my Yankee stuff in that print because I didn't want to get a stink eye. But love you wore the Red Sox stuff. Okay. So yes, we got Yankees and Red Sox fans here, and uh, and Cardinals and Rays and everybody else. I know. I see you all uh, as well. So, but did you know? Okay. So Thursday is opening day for NFL season. Did you know Thursday is another day as well? Yes. I mean, every, there's a day for everything, right? <laughs> so someone has decided that September 9th every year should be, and I quote, International Buy Your Priest a Beer Day. <laughs> so uh, now who do you think invented that day? <laughs> Priests. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so... Uh, because by the ninth day of the month, their beer budget's gone already. No, I don't know. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, and uh, I really don't. So, don't worry. Uh, you know, if it said brownie, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I need to remember me that, that day. Uh, but anyway, just to have a little fun and a laugh over that. Buy your priest a beer day. And that exists, so it's worth a laugh at least. Uh, and who probably thought it up? Yeah, probably priest. Uh, or the Knights of Columbus or something like that, right? Um, anyway, any other comments or questions at this time? Donna, yes? Um, I just want to say that um, we have a special cake, thank you, Steve, um, to, uh, to welcome the beginning of the football season. <laughs> and so anybody who wore their sports gear, it would be fun to take a picture of everybody with our special cake, okay? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, if you got your sports gear on, now you're obligated to go get a picture taken uh, by the cake, you know. And this is also the beginning of the football season. It's time to ask your team, what have you done for me lately? Right? So, all right. Uh, any, anything else? God's blessings on your day and your week.